fucking <laughs> What does it usually take for you to, like, get inspired to make something? Just... Mm. <laughs> well, I have to feel like there's a point in getting it out of my head and out into the world. Hmm. Like, it's fine if it's in my head. Like, I, I can hear the song anytime I want. I can close my eyes and be like, okay, I'm listening to that song. So why do I need to externalize it? That's how I felt about making this like, film. The I was problem like, is, <laughs> I can make this film. I've seen it a thousand different ways, and I know all the stories. Like I'm good, but now I want yeah. other people to know. Yeah, I, want to, I had a reason to share. You have, that. you have to have a reason to share, and I've been, I've been struggling with reason to get anything out. Honestly, I know this is a, in some ways, it feels like a dumb excuse, but during the Trump presidency, I just didn't give a shit. Like the world seems so nihilistic and pointless that it was like, do I need to share this? Like, no. Good enough if I, if I know it, if I've got it, it's it's enough for me. You know, it's like daily journaling, like, and writing. I can write all this stuff. Do I need to post it online? Hmm. Eh. You know, like, do I care? Uh, sometimes I care enough to hit publish. Most of the time I don't. And it's really just a matter of like, if I felt like there was a value add to me to putting my stuff out on the work in the world, then I would put more stuff out. But as it is, it's like, at a certain point, you spent enough of your time pouring all of your blood and soul into stuff, putting it out and having like a couple people go, oh, that was neat. And then, you, you know, move on. And that you're just like, well, it doesn't matter if anybody hears this. It, it, it's enough for me to hear it. And that's why I made it. And so there's a certain like constipation that comes up too when you feel like you have this giant backlog of material that you haven't really put out. It sort of makes you feel hesitant to write new stuff. Mm -hmm. And so you either have to decide that that stuff's never going to happen. You just write it off and say, okay, nobody is ever going to hear that song um, except me. And I'm going to move on and write new stuff. Or you go back and you revisit something that was you were on fire about like a year ago or six months ago and you do the work and it's a lot of fucking work to track the entire thing yourself, to mix it to the entire thing yourself, mm -hmm. to master the entire thing yourself, to do all of that work, play all the instruments, do all the stuff and have a couple people go, oh, gee, that was neat. And, and, you know, you, I've done that my whole life mm -hmm. to the point where it's like, you, you know, I put out a ton of albums and I've gotten some people who have been like, that was good stuff. And a few people who think it's great and they love it. Um, but when I sit there and think, what do I have to gain by putting out a record right now? The answer is not a shut, not, not a hell of a lot, mm -hmm. right? Like I, I can, re I can record it for myself, have it for myself and leave it in the vault. And that's as good as anything, right? Like every once in a while, I will decide that it's worth the work to do a thing and I will go through the work. Mm -hmm. But it's most of the time, a lot of my material now just lives in my head and it doesn't, but, ever, doesn't ever leave. It almost sounds like the natural process of like, when you're young, you have all the time in the world, but you have no money. And so you're like willing to put in an incredible amount of time for little money. Or, or like work your ass off for free to be a part of something. And mm -hmm. when you're older, you're like, okay, now I have a career, so I have money coming in, but I don't need time. So I'm gonna pay a bunch of young people who have no money, but plenty of time to go do this thing for me. And maybe that's just like a natural process of life, right? Like that's just how society works, but it's also, it's almost natural. It's not just like capitalism. It's just like how, how life- I think so. So maybe, maybe- You like, know, money is great so rarely is. factored in. You're in a great position to be a studio you know, money, artist. Money, money, money. A mixing artist for someone yeah. else, maybe. Someone who else is fired yeah. up. It's kind of like, have I got something to say that is, like, uh, there's a guy I know, musician who, local guy who's had some success over the years, like, uh, you know, the CMJ level of success. And I played shows with him and I really like him. And he, he put out a, a song, God, I don't know, a couple years ago now. He put it out on Facebook and he did, went through the trouble and made a video and everything. 
and the song was basically like the message of the song was um, I got nothing to say it was literally the lyrics of the song were like you know like I don't have anything to say and and he wrote a song about not having anything to say and that in and of itself was something to say I guess so there was some irony there and I enjoyed the song but um it's kind of like there's a certain point at which you go well i've said all this stuff and i've done all this stuff and i've poured all this stuff out and i did it because not because i thought i would make money but because i wanted to be understood Mm -hmm. and there's a certain point at which you're like i no longer give a shit if anybody understands me this is just i am who i am i care about what i care about i do what i do and nobody's understood it for the last 40 plus years why should they understand it now and you know at that point it's like why why put out a record um uh, if i did it because i was just purely enjoying it and because i was really excited about the result then i would release it for purely no other reason than because i was proud of it and uh the amount of work involved in doing it is 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 enough that it's tough like when I, if i'm not feeling like i'll be honest i've been like really really not feeling like i have a lot of purpose in life for a long time mainly because like my kid grew up and he's out of the house and and uh so i no longer have the purpose in life of, of parenting and I, you know, I, I, I did a lot that caused a lot of people to look at their religious beliefs and, and make changes. And I'm proud of all that work. And I've released a whole bunch of albums that I, I am proud to have released. Um, but until something comes along where I say, I care, I'm, I got to do this. I don't, you know, with no, no other motive other than I feel in, that I need to, then it feels like I'm pushing water uphill. And so I wind up, I, I, I'll, I'll wake up and, you know, like when I did like Hue and Cry, I, I woke up and with this song in my head and it had to happen, you know, so it happened. And now I wake up with a song in my head and I think, yeah, hey, it's a good song. I like that. Am I going to spend 11 hours in, in the studio working on just tracking it? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I have the time. I work from home. I, I have plenty of time. Time's not a problem. Um, it's just like that effort of actually physically making the recording Mm -hmm. is not necessary for me to Mm -hmm. enjoy the song for myself. And if I don't think anybody else cares, then, you know, I don't know. So it's kind of like where if I felt like there were people saying, we'd like to hear your music, Ryan, then I would be more likely to record my music. And if people are not saying they want to hear my music, then I'll just listen to it for myself. And I can, I can do that without ever hitting record on anything. So that I honestly, I find that that's what happens. I like, I set aside a time and I say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to track these songs. I'm going to do this stuff. And I start doing it. And I swear to God, I fall asleep in the middle of the track. <laughs> Like, I'm like, this is boring. This is not fun. I, I, it was fun when there were other people, when I had collaborators, when I could do stuff with other people and feed off of them. Mm -hmm. I could give them my idea and they could come back with a a different twist on my idea and I could hear it in a way I hadn't heard it before and I could get something out of it. Mm -hmm. And since that, none of that happens anymore, I mean, it's too lonely and you're saying so it doesn't happen anymore because don't. of covid like the isolation of the pandemic it's, it's a any... combination of covid and the fact that most of the people that i ever collaborated with have all gone on to have boring lives <laughs> you know everybody's got everybody's got significant others and frankly i mean i got into parenting so young that most of the people i know have got kids in elementary school or middle school mm, and right my kid my kid's gone you know like i didn't wait till i was 35 to have a kid i had a kid when i was 20 
right. my kid's 26 years old right. you know i like I've got all the time in the world, but all these other people who I might want to collaborate with, they all have got young they're kids super busy. and they're busy. Mm -hmm. And so for me to say, Hey, you know, what would be cool. What if, what if you find somebody to watch your kids and we spend some time doing some cool shit? It's not an easy sell. No, it's not. Cause they you want know? to hang out with their kids while their like, kids growing up. Yeah. And so, so most of my collaborators have disappeared. And that's why I've been playing in live bands mostly is because at least you get that, that fun of gig. collaborating during yeah. practices right. and then performing mm -hmm. and my own music, yeah, whatever. I, I care about it. And like I said, I've got a ton of it. I've got a ton of stuff you've never heard. Mm -hmm. um, and you may never hear, I may never put it up. Right. I don't know. Eric and I have been talking about that depressing a bit. <laughs> I mean, kind of, yeah. <laughs> I, I think that you, you're in a good position to like record young, fresh bands who do have time on their hands and are dedicating themselves to music and like you have the, you have the, the skills to help them to produce them. Like that'd be really cool to use your yeah. recording skills and time to like help some new young band like move. I mean, maybe there needs to be any money incentive, but it could be cool to like have sort of like a, I don't know, you could build that maybe like build it into a 90s style thing like you're talking about or I don't know how I don't know how you can make it into a viable business, but something that would be like, keep your like, use your yeah, skills. but I don't care if it's a viable business. Yeah, okay. Well, that, that's a bonus. Yeah, and it, <laughs> something that it, makes it fun and inspiring. I mean, you. it is a bonus. I, I literally I have no motivation beyond do I enjoy this? Mm -hmm. I don't have any reason to have any. I mean, I, I've been I, I'm a, I, I, I am not struggling financially right like um i fully own my my property like it's paid off i don't have a mortgage nice. um i am i am fine i am set if i retired tomorrow i would survive till i died and um that's amazing kind of career freedom. well enough it is but what's hilarious is you get to that point and then you're you don't have anybody else who's in that same position who wants to do anything with you right because they're all busy with their lives and making and money so, and trying to survive and yeah. get a mortgage. Yeah. yeah. And then you say, hey, can we, you want to do this thing that will be an incredible sink of your time, your energy, and your money, and will not in any way, shape, or form financially rec uh, recompense <laughs> you for it, but it will be spiritually liberating. And the answer <laughs> with most people is, uh, I'll get back to you. Maybe. Right. I don't know. We'll see. Mm -hmm. So then I have to do it myself. So, yeah, I still think I have some really good albums in me. I think eventually i will decide to put them out into the world but you ever pay attention um, i've just reached a point oh, sorry go ahead no just just i've just reached this point where it doesn't make i don't i don't find it exciting to release new material i just find it more interesting to do it for myself mm -hmm. um what i was going to say is and it's kind of a topic change but you've reached something that people would refer to as financial independence. Like you have fuck you money. You can do whatever you want. You can quit your job tomorrow and mm -hmm. you own your property. You're set. Basically you don't, you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily rich, yeah. but you're like, you have wealth in a sense. I have, I have spent most of my life in debt. That is no longer a problem. Right. So, yeah. So there's this whole movement called the FI movement, financial independence movement, or some people call it FIRE, which is financial mm -hmm. independence, retire early. But the retire is usually, retiring early is like the wrong, it's the wrong language for what we're talking about, what it's usually about. The idea is to like get a certain amount of money where like the money is invested and then you can pull down the principal by like the principal plus interest. It's like 4%, it's called the 4% rule. You pull down like 4% of that money and you can live for the rest of your life while that account either stays stable or grows um, yeah. or, or, or diminishes yeah. very slightly, but it's enough that you could like die with no money, but like live your whole life with as much money as you need without any worry. Right. Yeah. Um, you're not, you're not rich, but you're not worrying anymore. You're, you're set. Yeah. And yeah. it's money where you can say like, Hey boss, this is what I'm doing. Take it or leave it. And they, they they can say like, we're going to fire you. And you're like, like I said, take it or leave it. I don't care. You, I don't need the job. And they're like, how about you work from home or how about you, you know, work remotely from, you know, Guatemala. If you want to live in Guatemala, it sounds great. We'll keep this relationship going. And like, yeah, now the tables have turned where like you're in charge of your life. Right. Or you can just say, I quit and yeah. I want to do what I want to do because I, I care more about enjoying my time than 
uh, making money. Like the money motivation is out of the equation, essentially. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so there's this big movement and like a lot of stuff. There's a lot of podcasts about it, and I'm like been listening and like binging the stuff for for a couple of years now, and I'm well on my way to like getting to financial independence in a short amount of time, or shorter amount of time than the average person. Mm-hmm. I'm you know I'm starting out at this in my late 30s, and now I'm 40, so. Uh, a lot of people are doing this when they're like 22 or 25 when they have their first job and that would have been amazing because if you do it at 25 you can retire at like 35 or 40 depending on how you run yeah system. yeah but, and not retire but like yeah. you can you can have you can be free essentially free of the economic system you controlling can, you you can spend your time working on the things that you care about exactly right and usually like, a lot of those things work on money music right. yeah oh sure some of them do. That's the yeah. irony, right? Is as soon as you don't really absolutely have to have the money, like as soon as you reach that point, people want you, mm-hmm. right? Like uh, that, that's, that's what I've found like, professionally. Like, yeah. And and you don't give two fucks, right? Like what I, I, I was brought into the company I work at today because the CEO was like, I need somebody like this guy. And they, they came and they found me. It wasn't like I was looking, I had a job, I was fine. But they came and they were like, we need somebody with your skill set. We need you. And I was like, okay, well, here's how much I cost, and here's what I would care about, and here's what. And, and I've been there for a couple, of, two and a half years now. And and at no point do I have a problem with like talking to the CEO of the company and saying whatever the hell I think, because what are they gonna do? Fire me? I don't give a shit. Like I, I'm 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 here because I'm good at a thing, and you guys want me to do the thing, and I'll do the thing, and that's great. And I do the thing, and everybody's happy. And I'm gonna help this company make a lot of money, and they're gonna make it worth my while. But what's funny is, it's like it's almost like you've kind of gotten to where you can do something, and you've probably gotten this way with that electrical engineering. You get to a point where you can do a thing without even really having to put your whole mind into it. You can just do it. And suddenly, you know, since you're not fighting anymore, since you're not afraid anymore, corporate America suddenly goes, here, take our responsibilities. Yeah, we want people like you who know how to do it to just do it for us. Yeah. Please help us outsource this problem. (laughs) Yeah, and, and I can be like, well, cool, I like you guys, I'll do it. And then if I don't want to do it, I'll just go somewhere else. And I'm not worried at all. I'm not worried about my ability to get a different job. I'm not worried about climbing a corporate ladder. But what's weird about reaching this point in life, which I really have only reached since I turned 40, like this is not how I was for most of my life. Um, the last like five, seven years, I'm just kind of like, all right, well, what do I want to do? Right. Where, where, what, what do I care about, right? And and I'm realizing that so much of my life was like defined by the witnesses and then by being a dad and and by, you know, trying to like build basic financial stability in modern capitalist world and all that good stuff that I'm like, I'm good if I'm just happy on any given day. If I spend my day working on an old car and then I write a new song that I never record and then I spend some time cranking out pages on a typewriter and stuff and and it all stays totally in my basement. Okay. It's cool. I mean, I'm not trying to I don't I don't need to change the world. I'm not going to. It's a mess. Yeah. And I don't need to prove that I I don't need to prove my value because I already have so yeah it's a weird spot to be in i've actually struggled with it because i'm like okay but i used to be so fucking hungry i had to prove stuff i had to get i had to make things happen Mm -hmm. and now i'm like do i have to still (laughs) really i mean come on i've already done so much of that like can't shit just take care of itself and i can just not do stuff and wouldn't that be nice and you know i I, it's funny like i actually feel bad for joe biden because the dude's like 78 years old and all the world's problems he's like in order for him to get where he's been trying to get for 40 years he has to take on everything Mm -hmm. at a point where you know that in his heart of hearts he's like god damn it why do i have to do it i gave a shit when i was 30. why you know i had 78 do i have to start yeah (laughs) 
I'm 78. Why are you going to hand me this steaming pile of shit? You know? <laughs> and I'm kind of the same way a little bit. Like, I'm like, I, I would think it would be super cool to like, have some young band that was super hungry wanted to do stuff and i could help them do the thing mm -hmm. and it would be super exciting to work with them and get to see their enthusiasm and be able to be like oh yeah what if we did this would this be awesome and that shit and uh, well for my own stuff i'm just kind of like unless somebody even 30 years older than me comes and says hey this is really cool we should do this shit and take my stuff and run with it I was like, eh, you know, the world knows what I have to say. It's all out there. <laughs> I think after, so that's where I'm at. It, after cleaning out your cedar cabin, as we've, as you've deemed it, um, to make the shot yeah. for the film, I just have been thinking about it for those, you know, since 2018 when we filmed that, like you had said, you had said similar things to me then. Like it'd be really cool to like do something fresh and new with like you know some motivation that's like present, not some nostalgic thing like you even lamented earlier. Like you're not a nostalgic person; you want to just do yes. cool shit now in the present that uh, uh, means something now yeah. in the present. Um, I, I I feel I as a like to give you maybe to be a mirror of what you're saying to me. I feel like what you're trying to say is like if a band popped up and was like Ryan produce us, you might get excited about that and you might even have everything yeah. that they need music recording wise half the instruments or all of them and all the knowledge and all the mixing capability to have them walk into your studio record a session or a song or a whole a whole album and you could mix that and produce an entire album for them um, in your uh, yeah. in your property and that would be fun for you and i would enjoy every second of that i would enjoy every fucking second of that it would be so much fun I, 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 the, the energy of other people is the defining characteristic of music for me, right? It's, 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 it's other people's energy. And I lost the person that fed off my energy when Red died. And, and I've never really been able to recapture that. And, you know, right now, I mean, like Awkward Bodies, when we were playing before COVID, I was getting some of that. Like we were, we were, you know, and Eric was joining us. I don't know if you know this or not, but Eric came on as our drummer just before we, we went on oh, COVID cool. hiatus. And we did like two practices with Eric and God, we sounded good. Jesus Christ, we sounded good. I mean, Amazing. that was like a great, great fucking noise pop band. Like we were making some great fucking music cool. and I was loving it. And I was doing it every week and it was awesome. And there was Mason, and there was Jesse, and there's Eric and we got the feet off each other. And then it's like, now Mason's got a kid and COVID and whatever. So I don't know, man, it'll happen again. I can't believe it won't, but it's a little sad. And it explains why you haven't seen a Ryan Sutter album since 2014. Because honestly, I'm just like, I want to. But, but with who? Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm like, uh, I, no, nobody who's 25 is going to be looking at the 47 year old guy as the, uh, as the, as a creative partner. Right. It's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. It would be great if it did, but it's fine. You know, that's the way life works. And I, like I said, I've had a really, 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 really enriching and beautiful experience. So I can't complain, but I'm just, I'd have to decide, like, there was a reason for me to make another album that was more than, because none of it's, it's work now. Mm -hmm. It's work. I can play all the instruments, but it's work. And as you've learned from editing a film uh, or many films, it's work. Yeah. People do not appreciate how much goddamn work goes into that three minutes of music they hear. Right. And, you know, I got fiats to restore. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're, hold on, you're, I'll be right cool. back. I'm, I'm still here. Okay. I'm just stepping out of the frame for a second because my, my drink is empty. Yeah, no, oh, so that, 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 I might you do the know, same thing. I don't want depressing. Actually, I'm going to pee quick too. So, hold on a second. Okay, you got it. Uh, because 
I don't know. It seems like people are going to see this and they're going to, if they are interested in it, they will be interested in more. Mm -hmm. So the closer your movie gets to being something that the general public is going to see, the more I feel like, hey, maybe I should record those songs. Maybe I should do that shit. So you might be helping me. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. Like, uh, I feel like we've been doing this together now for three years. We've been having these conversations and yeah. like, I've, I've been working on this idea and like the story has come together around your story. So no one has really seen anything and I've been keeping it secret and under wraps this entire time. So <laughs> this, when this trailer hits this week um, and then when if a film festival picks this up, like that's huge publicity that is bigger than just like some guy you know just outside of minneapolis it's like this yeah. is an artist that's like getting center stage at like to an audience that's you know multi-city multi-state possibly multinational so people will wonder well who is this guy let's hear more about his story yeah. where can we find more information is he making music now is he in a band like what's happening because like it looks like you're in a band and it looks like you're making music but this is an, a documentary about some other time in the past um, yeah and i love to make things that are about musicians that are active and so like it'd be cool for me <laughs> but it's much cooler for you obviously it's much more impactful that you're putting your own work out um but that's yeah you should you should uh, whatever motivates you i guess but it'll be a pub there'll be a public aspect to this for sure I know, and that actually does change the math for me a bit because it's a lot of it is just, you know, I can't, I don't mean to be like, woe is me, but when the nuclear gopher thing exploded and nobody was, you know, and I was persona non grata, it also sort of removed a lot of my uh, impetus for making stuff. You know, because it was like the, it wasn't like the audience went away because there were still people who cared, but I was part of a thing and then that thing didn't exist. And then it was like, do I start a different thing or do I just do this without being part of anything? And, uh, and that, that has been challenging because you know, it's, it's, again, it's not about time. I, I mean, hell, I had less time back when I was doing all the nuclear gopher stuff. Right, so um, meetings and, it's just and a family and a young kid and stuff. Yeah, and I still had the full-time job and I still had all this. Right. Nothing was different. Um, I had less money, I had more responsibilities and I had less time. Yeah. It's not about the time but it's about whether or not there's anybody who's going to pay any damn attention to anything mm -hmm. and if there are people who might be paying attention then maybe it's worth putting some of the shit on tape and making things happen again in a way that they didn't before so yeah your your documentary actually does play a factor in, in my feelings about making more music like i still feel like the best album i ever recorded was blood and scotch valentine and i I would love that. to make more. You, 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 I think you did. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Serene Valentine. I imagine Grace is in the film. Yep. That's right. Imagine Grace. Yeah. Cool song. Yeah. Last night you woke up in the middle of your darkest dream. Um, so I know I've got. And I think I'm I'm actually able to make better music now even than I did before. I just have to have a reason to make it happen. Did I tell you about the idea of Outside putting on of a here. putting on a show, a festival, or like a concert called My Adventure Flowerland? Would be the best. How would we run My Adventure Flowerland? How could we make this happen? Oh Jesus Christ! I would love to make that happen. I have no idea logistics off the top of my head. So it's mid no, it's two o'clock in the morning here. It's been midnight, midnight oh, where you Jesus. are. Jesus, yeah. Okay, sorry, we can wrap just, up anytime. <laughs> but no, it's all right. My adventure flowerland. I would the festival that you never made, but you were working on making the day that you like lost all your connections, right? 
or not yeah. the day, but like that month or two or whatever, you were planning this festival that was going to happen that year. So it'd be really cool to put it, put on a festival in the spirit of what that spirit of that was going to be. And yeah, that's a lot of work. What's way easier is to not do it. It's to not do it at all, to do zero of that. But to do that, it's like the world where that exists is so interesting that I'm like, kind of want to dedicate myself because it's not, also, I don't have to do all the work. Like I can help promote it and like help design it, but it's really all the artists who have to bring their amps and their guitars and like rally and talk to like 40 other artists and guitar people and musicians and recording people and people with speakers and people with vehicles and like transport and like yes. talk to all the friends and family who might kind of want to come. It's like a whole thing. It's a ridiculous, completely ridiculous idea. And it definitely would not happen. And I love it. It would happen in Minneapolis somewhere or St. Paul. Um, it could be on your property. Holy shit, dude. You could do it off your deck. <laughs> or if in people, your... If people, watch, <laughs> if people watch your movie, I will want to do things like that. All right. I mean, uh, let's be honest. I mean, like, not because I want to capitalize financially, but because because uh, I really don't. It's just money's not really even a factor, but because it would be, it would be validating, mm. like to to play a show where people like wanted to be there and were interested in what you were doing would just be awesome, you know. So much of my success in the world has been underground. <laughs> even you calling the thing witness underground is ironic because it's like nobody can admit that they even know me or <laughs> right. that they listen to me or they talk to me or anything or that like that they read a word that you ever read and i know it's like you know um on this this big underground success nobody can admit to <laughs> and uh it would be nice to get on a stage and have people be like shit it's ryan sutter that's great i want to yeah. hear his music it would be right. awesome i would i would i would feel really really good and that's all i'm after at this point is feeling good not feeling bad about doing this stuff and and when i do this stuff and i feel like it's a chore or i feel like there's no point then it doesn't feel good but when you get on stage and people are like, like you, you know, there's energy and people are enjoying it, then it feels great. It's like the best feeling ever, you know. And and uh, I just want that feeling. I just, that's all I want. It's not. It's not even. It's not even hard to. Uh, I mean, I'm not. I'm. I'm I, I, I literally have no other motivation at this point. Just done. What if we? So if why we would promote I? it they will come that kind of idea like uh what's that movie yeah the baseball movie. I'll, I'll play so that they'll come what if it's at if your you house they will you, come. To, you know you to host like a uh, hundred people in your property or a thousand people you have a pretty big property it could be out of the cedar cabin just open the big door do it. put a stage up like right at the door or the he's already fine on the floor actually because it's like a hill that slopes down <laughs> into the forest <laughs> <laughs> natural amphitheater the natural mm -hmm. amphitheater um no i i honestly like i would love it i i i'm all about having exhilarating and worthwhile experiences before i die yeah fun that's well, it i don't want to throw it together like, like together the cedar cabin session for the movie i would like to be a little <laughs> more organized than that if possible <laughs> fair enough that's fair enough uh I, but i can't I, imagine I it working reasonable. out any different <laughs> it won't work out any other any different than that. Given you know, the people if, that are if people involved. show up and there's yeah, I mean, you got a ton there's so many talented people uh, like that I've been fortunate enough to know and work with and be related to uh and you know, I mean, I can think of nothing better than to just sort of like still be here and still be doing stuff and still enjoy it. I just I'm at a point where um, that's been hard, but honestly, I, I I told Esther this like too many times. I'm like, Scott actually took this thing and made something out of it that people might care about. 
I think people they might. care about it. I hope so. I don't know. Like, I wonder if they'll care. I'm sort of where you're at. I think at. they will. <laughs> I think they will. And I think it's worth me, you know, like you said, I've got my whiteboard in there with all my songs on it. And uh, I learned to play saxophone, which is nice. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, what do you have? Do you have an alto or a baritone? Oh. Uh, it's a uh, tenor sax or alto sax. The higher one okay. of the two. Oh, oh. Alto. Yeah. Yeah. I learned like the, the little learned one. That's like the normal size one, like two feet long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The normal, the normal size one. That's yeah, what I grew yeah. up with. Yeah, I learned to, I, I learned to play that. Um, I wanted to play that in fourth grade, but I had broken my teeth, so I couldn't do the embouchure on the reed. So they made me play French horn instead. So. Um, I went back over the last couple of years. I learned to play saxophone. So that's cool. new. I didn't think I, I don't think I owned a saxophone when you were out here. Um, that's cool. And I've I bought... actually got a couple of songs. I've got one that's got a sax part. It's called Brenda Loves James that I've been working on. But again, will I ever release it? Eh. I get triggered every time I hear the saxophone because my mom played the saxophone when she was in high school. And then she had a kid at 19. So like, <laughs> that's like the best part of her life. So yeah. Um, when I wanted to play an instrument, my older brother played drums and she didn't care about the drums. And when I wanted to play an instrument, she's like, you should play saxophone. And I was like, I really want to play trumpet. I was like really into horns. For some reason, I liked brass. He's like, well, saxophone's really similar to a trumpet. You can get a saxophone. So I got stuck with the saxophone even though I didn't want to. For like five years, I played the saxophone. And the whole time I was like, you know what I really want to play? Anything else. Anything that buzzes, I want to play. Not a, I don't want to play a reed. I want to play a trumpet or a trombone or something it's so cool and like, i love ska music it was really big at the time so like i loved it it's awesome always a brass section uh, but so whenever i hear saxophone i'm like all i wanted to be was a rock star but all i got was this fucking saxophone like a jazz musician thing <laughs> so like at one point my dad's like if you can play this pink floyd song i'll buy you a guitar and i was like screw you i'm gonna go mow three lawns and buy a guitar and i went and i mowed some lawns and i made 100 <laughs> bucks and i bought a guitar and i put the saxophone in the closet and never picked it up again that's uh, awesome i have a little bit awesome. of a burn in my soul for the saxophone so when i hear it i'm like no no mm -hmm. there should be no sax in any song any songs <laughs> but there are some good songs with sax <laughs> so, pink floyd did a good job did, do you remember the set did. the the sax solo in A Man Could Get Tired. Hmm. I've got a saxophone solo in A Man Could Get Tired. And oh, man. But there's like, it's like, um, uh. No, where is that? There's this, there's. What album is there's that? There's this sort of, it's on A Man Could Get Tired and other songs. Oh, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, there's a sax solo on A Man Could Get Tired. And I got to tell you, this is a funny thing. So that sax solo was performed by a guy named Brian Bishop. And Brian was a witness who was in a grown-up band. Like, okay, so when we were kids and my mom was a singer in a band, you know, there was like all these witness uh, wedding bands. They would play oh, at people's receptions. Hearts. Yep, yep. And my mom's was called Cactus, and there was another one called Mount Mist that was local, that was made of some elders. And those were like the grown-ups, and we were the the kids making our own weird ass music right mm -hmm. they they would play all the covers and we would play all the original weird shit so brian bishop <laughs> moves moves from i want to say delaware he moved from delaware into our congregation and he played with mount miss and so he was in one of my mom's like one of the local elder cover bands and so i never would have thought twice about asking brian to play music with us but late 90s brian hears us and he's like i don't want to play with these boring ass people playing this like cover stuff i want to do what you weirders weirdos are doing and even though he was like 10 years older than any of us he decided to come play with us so i thought that was a serious coup that we got brian away from mount miss to come record with the levon and uh elvendahl was involved with us at this time too this was around the time we guys and um, so Bishop comes in and we start doing some of his songs and he 
he did this song we did this song that's not on anything called then the cows roared which is one of his and it's, it's pretty hilarious but um brian could play flute saxophone mandolin and guitar and he also has this really wonderful baritone voice. He was actually a DJ and he um, did, you know, he's got that radio DJ voice, mm. you know? And um, so Brian does voiceover work and he does DJ work and all this stuff. And he came in, he recorded with the Lebone for a few years. And fast forward to when I've left the witnesses and everything. And Brian also left the witnesses. But Brian went totally Rush Limbaugh, ditto head, conservative, MAGA, like, like yeah. political junkie on the right, far right political junkie. So he and I connected on social media. And at first it was like, isn't this cool? We're talking again. And gosh, you remember when we all recorded music on the phone and we did then the cows roared and we did all this stuff. And Brian did like the saxophone solo on Float. And um, and I had this song, Man Could Get Tired, and I knew it, I needed a saxophone solo for it. So I sent it off to Brian and, in Delaware, and because he had moved away again and gone back to the, the Delaware, Maryland area. And um, I sent it to him, and he recorded that solo on there. And then we had this huge falling out on social media because he was so right-wing and so nuts that I couldn't even talk to him anymore. Like he had gone so far down the Rush Limbaugh uh, uh, Kool-Aid drinking path. So we had this big fallout and now we're like not even connected at all. But I did get him to do that sax solo on uh, A Man Could Get Tired. That's and cool. then I was like, man, if I, ever, if I ever need another sax solo, which doesn't come up often, let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> it's not a regular, you might hit him regular up. thing. Uh, and no, I was like, I have to buy a saxophone and learn how to fucking play sax. <laughs> because if I don't, if I don't, I have to ask Brian. <laughs> I mean, so he I might do it. Saxophone he might do it. <laughs> took some lessons. He might, but I won't ask him because of his political beliefs. I'm like, I'm like, no. It is I'm a sorry. belief system. We can gets to that literally. Stuff. Dude, I'm not going to ask a guy who is sad about Rush Limbaugh passing away to play a saxophone solo. Shit, did Rush die? I didn't even I'm going to buy a fucking sick. Oh, yeah, it was today. Oh, my God. Today? Yeah, he today? died today. Whoa. I didn't know. Yeah, today, today. Wow. It was, in the news. it was in the news this morning. That's why you haven't heard about it. But wow. Rush died today. I make it a habit to not read So I'm today. like, that's smart. Um, but that's why I went and bought it. That's why I learned to play saxes, so I don't have to have Brian Bishop record any future <laughs> sax solos I might need. <laughs> okay, not all extra hoses. And the thing is, equal. do me a favor. Play A Man Could Get Tired. Play A Man Could Get Tired and listen to that sax. I will. I have it queued up. I'm ready to play it. It's so awesome. And when he sent that back to me with that sax solo, he's like, I, he's like, I, I had to go into my garage and it was freezing cold, and but I, it took me ten takes. But I got your sax solo, man. And so oh, I've got cool. that sax solo. But I'm not, I'm not like, it, 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 for me, saxophone like ha has been like good in bebop jazz, and then briefly in punk rock with X-ray specs. And then briefly in post punk with morphine, and that's pretty much all the sax has been good. Right, <laughs> that's like all the everything sax else was. I, I know I agree with you. Yeah. Sax is kind of an awful instrument, and it's barely, barely been used for good, except for I think Sublime yeah. pulled it off with a couple tracks, and yep. it surprises me every single time I hear it. I'm like, no saxophone. Wait, that's actually a really cool melody. Okay, this actually well, drives the music forward. Just, <laughs> you, you, you do me a favor and at least listen to a man could get tired and tell me you can tolerate the saxophone presence because that was important to me yeah. that there would be saxophone I, on there. I will do that. <laughs> um, what I was going to say too is that so so his political beliefs um, are an issue and I think they are an issue in society. It's a it's a big yeah. problem and it made me think of how you know when I was conceiving of this film like this is my first film 
And one of the things that I, was very necessary for me, like I have a very, very strong music background. My band, um, my, my, the band I was in in high school that became a band post high school, we toured and played a bunch of bars and stuff in the local, local region of Wisconsin. And then like I made a band and I was like, oh, I can do this on my own, which I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, but I thought I could do it on my own in the witness world. And then I found the nuclear gopher world. And then like after then I took a big break. And then when I left the witnesses, I was like music. So like I joined, a, I started a band with a friend of mine who I had met. And then we had like a college house, house party house. And we played a lot of shows. We hosted a lot of shows. We opened for a lot of bands. And it was just fun. Like it was all about just having a really good time. Like music has been a part of my life. It infuses everything I do. When I made this film, it was really important to me that music was a part of it and was like the central theme of it because what you said was like, this this guy played saxophone on your song and maybe you didn't know his political be beliefs at the time, but like music transcends politics. Music transcends belief. Music affects the religious and the atheists. Music moves between Muslims and Christians and atheists and Hindu yeah. and you know Buddhism. Like music moves people. Like, like I dated this girl and we're still friends to this day. She's Buddhist through and through, 100%. Her culture has been Buddhist for thousands and thousands of years. She will never change that, probably. But, like, she wanted to dance to salsa. And, like, I have, I, like, kind of, I kind of, like, I don't hate salsa, but, like, I don't feel salsa. Like, but I get, I, mm -hmm. through her, through her, I learned that, like, salsa is really cool because people, like, go there and there's a community and, like, it's fun. And, like, you, you trade partners in the dance floor, like, all night. Yeah. And it's like a really fun, yeah, vibrant, yeah. vibrant thing. So like you create friendships really closely because you're like touching each other and you're moving to the same music and people that love it, like really love it. Um, so like salsa is like moving this Buddhist woman to like change her life. Like she lives for salsa. It, it irks me to this day <laughs> that that's what she cares about. <laughs> Cause like, I don't give a shit at all, but uh, <laughs> Music transcends everything, and, and to have like to have your story told through music, and music being such a big part of your life, it just made so much sense to me. But like, music, if, if, who, if if only like ten people, or even just one person, like cares about this story and watches this film and is affected by it in some way, like, music is like, I feel like the medium that moves from just like a story you hear in the passing to like emotionally like really motivating someone and i don't think i'll ever change that like i only want to work with artists who make music and tell stories that have oh, yeah. music as like yeah. a strong strong theme or at least work with a composer who's like deeply invested in the story to to write music that moves the story forward appropriately and composers are amazing for, for the film. I could not agree more. I, I Music is, when you were talking about salsa, it made me think of a time when I was um, down in Uruguay and I was at a tango night at a bar. And there was like this guy and this woman and they were up on this tiny stage that was like the size of like a large couch, right? And they were tangoing all night. And it was one of the most like beautiful, sexy, amazing, wonderful experiences ever to just sit there and watch these two tango. And I don't listen to tango music. I don't know shit about tango music. I don't, I've been to Uruguay twice, but I'm not exactly like, an, you know, linked in to the local culture of Montevideo, right? It's just, it's just, but to see the way, like when they said, hey, we're all going to go out for tango tonight. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, that sounds stupid. Like, why are we going to do that? You know, and they were, like, and they were like, no, trust us. It's really great. We're going to go to this place. It's really, it's really famous for these tango nights and you go and we're going to watch people tango. 
I was like, so am I going to have to dance? I don't, I don't know how to do this. And they were like, no, you just, you just go. So I was like, fine, whatever. Everybody else is going. I'll go. It was corporate thing, you know? And I got there and it was like watching these people. And it was one of the most hypnotic and beautiful things I've ever seen. And one of the things that I have learned about music is that music is pre-language. It's pre-belief. It's pre-everything. It, it, it's in your brain. If there's a fundamental thing that makes humans humans, it's music. And, and I would so much rather not even know that somebody is into Rush Limbaugh if we both were like tango, right? You know what I mean? Like, like just that, right. just seeing, like sharing that experience, Jesus Christ, it allows you to be so much closer to people that with all of these stupid surface things, why is somebody right wing versus left wing? Probably psychology, fear, uh, indoctrination, upbringing, right. upbringing yeah. all these other yes. factors. Brainwashing. Right? They don't have shit to do with being a human who feels. Music is all about being a human who feels, right? Yeah. And whether it's, you know, standing there and listening to My Bloody Valentine send out 10 minutes of a solid wall of sound that causes your entire body to vibrate and your ears to pop out and you just feel like you've physically been transported to another planet or whether it's getting super baked and watching Animal Collective. I don't, it oh, doesn't man, fucking love matter. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. really high at an animal collective show that was so good <laughs> but it doesn't matter because music just cuts through all the shit and just takes yeah. you straight to somewhere mm. and, it does. and it does. so I think you make movies about music and I will help you with making movies about music yeah let's make movies together about music Put me you know, in. guess how much I want to do this alone Include? zero I don't ever want to do this by myself again and like obviously you've been a part of this and so as I've run in the film and a part of this and my editor and Brian uh, co-producer has been a part of this yeah like I have been doing a lot of this film alone and I will never I'm like I know so so ready to never do this alone again um it's been oh, a journey dude, and I've learned a lot I know but if you want to make a fucking movie let's make a movie dude let's do it let's go let's go I will actually give look I just out. I just need an excuse. Uh, you know, here's, Sounds like it. dude, you're doing all this by yourself. Do you know how much of what I've done was what you're doing for the last three years? And it didn't pay off until decades later. <laughs> like, right. And now. I don't mean that in a depressing <laughs> way. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't mean that in a depressing way. I mean that in a good way. But my, my point is that whatever you're doing, if you're doing it by yourself, fine. So was fucking Van Gogh. So was fucking yeah, like sure. everybody who made song. any. Uh, is what it is, but but you're passionate and you stick with it. And the point is that you know I want to. Um, you I discovered care. you discovered me all these years later. Somebody's gonna discover you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you're passionate about what you're doing. Right. So and that's what it takes. I mean, right? what is it, John? John? Yeah. Life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans, man. That's what it is. <laughs> but honestly, it's far. I didn't. That I'm just quoting John Lennon. But um, I, 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 I want to have the excuse to do more stuff. I don't want to just spend the rest of my life tinkering on old cars. <laughs> tinkering old cars so. is fun. That's true. But there's more. <sighs> yeah, if I'm not stopped, I'm gonna wind up buying some Alfa Romeo from the '50s and spend the rest of my life trying to make it into a conqueror's. <laughs> There's this quote I want to read. This quote is by um, wow, I gotta see, man. Howard Thurman. Howard Thurman says, "Don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive, and go do it because the world needs what the world needs is people who have come alive." So yeah. what makes you come alive? And I feel like that's a, a question you should ask yourself, like, right, reg very regularly, whether it's daily or like yeah. throughout your life, every few months or something. Like, if you're not feeling alive in this thing, then you shouldn't be doing it. And if you are feeling alive, then you should do a, a lot more of it. You should go out and do the thing that makes you yeah. feel alive all the time. And if it's not feel making you feel alive, you should like drop it because what's the point otherwise? What the world needs is for you to feel alive 
because you'll affect everyone else around yeah. you because you're alive and they'll be inspired by you. Like you were talking about feeding off of Rhett or like an artist that you like work with or uh, just someone who makes you want to go do, go jump up and do something like go do that thing because with that person, because that like those people, those are the people you should have around you because that like fire you up. Yeah. And that's what the world needs to like keep moving forward and be inspired to do something new. You're right. I can't say anything else other than you're right. Yeah, because you are. I mean, everything that I've ever done that's been worth the damn has been because of that. It's just, that's it. Like, seriously. Like, uh, if you do anything because you expect, you know, riches, fame, glory, or anything else, it's never going to go the way you think. It just isn't. And, and that's fine. But if you do things because they make you feel alive, then cool. they matter. The right things right. will happen. Yeah. yeah. Well, the right things are happening. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to yeah. knock this back, this last little tiny bit of bourbon I've got here. Uh, Cheers. I switched from scotch to bourbon because, you know, life is too short to stick <laughs> with one bottle. Um, also, you, you want to drink the good stuff first. Couch, so. And then you drink this. You drink the yeah the middle stuff after. That's the right move. I approve. Yeah, this. the bourbon is the uh, <laughs> the bourbon the bourbon is the is the padding. <laughs> yeah. You 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 uh, you leave yeah. the scotch for the beginning of the night and really really enjoy every element of that because it's the it's the real deal. The bourbon is like every night kind yep. of. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's why you can buy your bourbon at Costco and you buy your scotch <laughs> at the good place. Exactly. I am fully with you on that. I know I know there are fancy bourbons, but fuck it. Um, all right. <laughs> um, so you're going to um, let me know when that trailer's out. I'm going to let everybody start watching that trailer. Hmm. Um, I'm going to, I'll let you, I'll keep you posted on how that goes. And I'm excited, uh, I, I'm excited to share that with the world. That's going out ASAP. I'm so dope. So stoked on that. I, I will try. <laughs> I will try to uh, spend some time in my studio making some new music so that when this thing comes out and people say, what the hell is he up to now? There will be an answer. There'll be a whole new album. We'll that's what I want to hear. And there'll be a, definitely be a, a soundtrack that we can put together. But a whole the new, new album, album is what I want to hear. really good. Yeah? It's, it's uh, really so good. I'm... It's right here. I can hear it. <laughs> it's really good. Can you do a brain mind meld with me? We have to share God, that would be just so much be... less work. <laughs> right? Jesus fucking Christ, that would be so much less work. Oh, my God. I'll try to make that you know, happen. If you, with my if, you want to make the world's, <laughs> if you want to make the world's most boring documentary, document somebody recording a song. <laughs> I can do that with you. That would be an interesting experience. 12 it's hours not, long. I promise. <laughs> it is not interesting. I don't know if you remember, but... Uh, it would be a reality TV once. show right there. Oh, my God. <laughs> Cor Billy Corgan and Smashing Pumpkins once decided to try to do something like this and they live streamed a recording session and I tried to watch it and right and watching watching them go through the bass part 78 times to get the daw take fuck like nobody's nobody wants to see this nobody wants to see how this shit happens they just want to see the end either. result yeah <laughs> right no, you want to watch Game of Thrones. You don't want to watch the CGI guy working on the fucking dragons. You just don't. <laughs> it's boring. Yeah, you're right. I don't care about the dragons, to be honest. I want the final nope. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, I will try to make some music for you. This is inspiring to me that you're doing this. And, well, you've done it. I, 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 I apologize for any skepticism I may have had at the beginning that I didn't express, but I did have. Everyone has. Everyone still has, to be honest. Everyone. But now we have a thing. It's yeah, done. Well, and it's great. No, so you, you have more than proven yourself. You've more than proven yourself to me. Uh, not that you needed to, but but um, my God, I like, honestly, like, I was like, oh, that's so cute. This guy wants to make a movie. <laughs> I'll give him shit. I'll, get, I'll give him stuff. There will never be a movie. And now you're fucking submitting it to the fucking festival. I'm like, yeah. oh, shit, there's a movie. <laughs> <laughs>